All over the internet, you see people struggling to get their first job or even to change into other software jobs. Then you have the media stressing on tech layoffs and hiring freezes to where a lot of people are deciding not to even try to get into software development at all. But these posts and these articles that you read are not giving the entire picture of what's really going on in the software field. So in this video, I'm gonna give the truth about finding a software job by telling you my story on how I struggled to get my first job, what was the turning point for me to get my first job, and my advice to anyone else that's in that same situation now. So to get a better understanding about what I'm gonna explain in this video, I have to go back and tell you a little bit more about me. Now growing up, I was always taught that the best way to become successful was to go to school, make good grades, and then go to college. And I had that mindset since very young, from elementary school, all through high school, and through college as well. I was always a good student, I was always on A and B honor roll, I had never been in any legal trouble or done anything to embarrass my family. I was the model student. And I had this misconception that if I was a model student, as soon as I would graduate from college, that I would walk directly into a good paying job and live happily ever after. But unfortunately, things didn't work out that way for me. But I ended up graduating at one of the worst economic towns in our country. And it was very, very difficult to get a job, especially for new graduates. So that brand new marketing degree that I worked so hard for ended up getting me a job at a pest control company. And working that job for that year ended up being one of the worst times of my life. I mean, I absolutely hated this job. I remember how I used to look forward to the weekends, but as soon as Sunday afternoon would come, my mood would completely change because I knew that that Monday morning was the start of another terrible week. I mean, I was in school picturing myself in suits and visiting clients, and now I'm getting dressed with boots and overalls because I knew that I was gonna have to crawl into somebody's house that day to inspect for rodents. By the way, if you've never been in a crawl space, you haven't felt the anxiety of the unknown until you do. It's no telling what you'll find under somebody's house. So I struggled for that year to try to fit into this mode of becoming a pest control guy. The company wanted me to become a manager, but I just didn't see myself wanting to stay in that field at all. And it started to become pretty obvious that I hated my job and I ended up losing that job. And losing that job put me at the lowest point of my life. Because like most new grads, I had an apartment, I had a car note, and I had a bunch of student loans that I had to pay for and I had no income. I ended up losing a lot of weight due to stress and worry because I had to move in with a family member before I got evicted from my apartment. And I really didn't know what I was gonna do with myself. But then a very special person to me helped me get on my feet and helped me to get an account management position that was paying me $15 an hour. Even this job was on a probationary period because this was a job that was created by the manager as a favor for me. If I did well at the job after three months, then they were looking to hire me full time. But if not, then unfortunately I would be out of work again. So I ended up working that job as best as I I could and after those three months I actually got hired full time. Now as time went on I started to get pretty cool with the manager and he would ask me questions here and there about my future and I never really had a good answer. So one day he told me that he wanted to take me out to lunch because he wanted to talk to me. Now when he told me this I started to get pretty nervous because I wasn't sure what he wanted to talk to me about. He really didn't invite people out for one on one lunches. It was always in a group setting. So I remember like yesterday we ended up going to a Cuban restaurant and we were having a good time just talking and joking and then out of nowhere he stops the conversation and he asked me so what are you gonna do with your life? And I asked him, what do you mean what I'm gonna do with my life? You deserve to be doing more than what you're doing. You have to figure out what you're gonna do for yourself. And this was a turning point that got me into thinking about other careers and things that I could do to get myself in a better situation financially and a better future. So I researched and I asked around about different careers that I can get into that didn't require me going back to school because I really didn't wanna go back to get another degree. And that's when I got introduced into the field of software development by a friend of mine. He mentioned to me that I didn't have to go to school to get a degree if I could learn the skill and convince someone to hire me, I could make a career for myself. So I decided to give it a try. And that very same night, I created an account on Codecademy and I started to learn Python. Now, if you started Codecademy, you know the first steps are extremely basic and extremely easy. And that was my initial perception of this entire software field. I said, this is really easy. But then I started to grow bored with Python and I started to look at other different languages that interest me more. And that's how I ran into JavaScript. I started to learn JavaScript because it was more visual. I had a quicker response to see if what I was doing was working or not compared to some of the other backend languages. But to my surprise, I started to actually really like it. And I told myself that if I could study for at least three months nonstop, that I was gonna make the firm decision that I was gonna get a job in the software field and I wouldn't quit until I did. So three months came and went, and I was still studying, I still enjoyed it, and that's when I made my decision. I was gonna become a software developer. I worked on learning every single day. I would wake up early in the mornings to learn and code. I would do the same during my lunch break at my account management job, and the same things in the evening and on the weekends. I was extremely determined to get a job at some point because I had no other option. It was either that or stay broke in my account management job 
and not really know where to head to in my future. So once I started to study and the months came, I told myself that I was gonna go at least a year before I started to apply for jobs. But I got impatient around 10 to 11 months and I started to apply and just kind of see what would happen if I did apply to jobs. And this is where the pain started. After applying for a few weeks, I started to see just how difficult it was to get my first job. I had no idea how to create a good resume. And plus, what would I put on my resume? I didn't have any technical experience. I had no idea how frustrating it would be to get those rejection emails that tell you that, that you don't fit what they're looking for or that they found a better candidate to fill the position. And that went on for many months. It got to the point to where I lost track of how many times I applied to positions to only get the same rejection emails or no response at all and I was very, very close to just giving it all up. I was talking to my wife when I was going through all of that and she told me that I couldn't give up. I had made the decision that I was gonna get a job and I can't quit. I took the time to learn how to write a good resume, how to search for a position that fit with my actual criteria and the things that I learned, and I slowly started to get phone screens. But then I never got invited for a second interview because I did terrible at the phone screens. I didn't know how to answer the questions in a way that made the recruiter excited about recommending me for the next steps. So then I had to learn how to talk to recruiters and answer their questions to get a more emotional response to recommend me for the next steps. And then slowly I started to get some second interviews and I would have so much imposter syndrome, I would feel anxiety anytime I would get past the phone stream. So I remember going through coding challenges and technical interviews in person and I would just be bombing these interviews, just doing terrible at these interviews. And I started to feel like I would never get a job because it was just too difficult. I felt like I had learned a lot through the courses that I had taken. I learned how to code, but I didn't know how to get a job. And this vicious cycle continued until I found my edge. Now your edge is something that sets you apart from everybody else. And this can be something technical or non-technical. Since I had always been comfortable talking with people, I started to really zone in on that part of my skill set to make up for the things that I didn't know technically. So as I worked to increase my technical ability, I made it a point to make sure I showed my personality, my determination, and my focus to get into the field. And that's actually how I got my first job. I was up against a recent grad from a tech school for a junior engineer role. I went through the entire interview process up until the point to where it was time for them to make a decision. So I started to count myself out due to imposter syndrome. And I heard back maybe a week or two later and unfortunately I was told that I didn't get the position and they chose the other candidate. But the thing was the recruiter told me that the team enjoyed interviewing with me so much that they recommended me for another position for a new team and a new project. She asked if I was interested because it wasn't necessarily related directly to JavaScript, but I wanted my first job, so I took it and I went in to meet the manager and to learn more about the project. It was a very casual conversation and they ended up offering me the job. But the only thing about this job was that it was underpaid and I wasn't coding in JavaScript. I was actually gonna be using SQL and heading more towards data analysis. But that's what I had to do to get into the field, to take a job that I really didn't want, but I had to get it on my resume to get some type of professional experience to be able to make the transition into what I actually want to do later on. From that first job, I was able to move and transition into more front-end development development and to get back into JavaScript. This only happened because of that firm decision after three months that I was not gonna give up until I got my first job. So by not giving up, I was able to learn how to improve my resume, which led to me getting more phone screens. By not giving up and continue to talk to recruiters, I started to get more comfortable with phone screens to where I started to get invited for second interviews. So by not giving up and going through all these failed code challenges and all these failed technical interviews, I started to get more comfortable and to start to learn the things that I needed to know to be able to get a job until eventually everything came Came together and I got my first job. So the honest truth about getting a software job is that it's very difficult, especially for entry level position. And it may take a little longer than what you would expect or what you may want sometimes. But if you commit to your goal and you don't give up, things have a funny way of working out. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.